Hi, everybody. I think we all need a good laugh, don't we? Okay, this is my Hoya report. For some of you that uh, have been following me, you understand. I'm not going to go into the whole story, but uh, you've got to watch where you step. You know, the Hoya story. So it's grown. I've transplanted this, and it's growing horns, <laughs> vines. We need to laugh today. Do you guys just feel like a heaviness? And I bring this out because th the more and more it seems like a couple of my friends got taken down off of YouTube and we've been having so many people be unsubscribed from my channel, which has been going on for a long time. And <clears throat> I just want to encourage everyone to go back to the old YouTubes that I used to preach on because I would had a lot more freedom and I kind of knew this even back then, that there was a window that I had to get this out, the stuff that I had to preach. And we didn't take vacations. We hardly even went anywhere because I knew the window was short to get truth out. And it was just like this urgency that I didn't want to rest. It's just like, blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet, blow the trumpet. And if you see the bills that they have lined up now for what's going on, and this is the thing, it's hard for somebody that wants to tell truth when you feel like you're being gagged and you don't even know what you can say and what you can't say anymore. Uh, so we're going to do our best, but there's a lot of Hoya going on. And especially going into this political year of presidency here, you have to keep your eyes on the Lord because we have to beware of the leaven of Herod and the leaven of the Pharisees. And earlier today, I just ripped up a message that I had prepared. I was just so frustrated because a lot of what I want to say, I can't say no. There's certain words you cannot say, so I'm going to try to do this carefully. But we're going to have to go and read our own Bibles, so I'm going to just give you a Bible verse, some of the things you can no longer say. And you have to understand and connect the dots and read through the lies of what, what's going on in our world. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And the plans that I've been talking about for a long time, I can't even, I don't think I can even mention that name anymore. Uh, you say, well, you can say it. You can say it, but then you're shadow banned. And we've watched this week by week by week. And you guys keep me going. The ones that send me emails, the ones that are supporting our channel, uh, if it weren't for you guys, I think I'd just retire because it's just like, this is such a battle. But because of you guys, and I know you're listening, and I get uh, emails still from around the world, it's amazing um, that we all have to keep each other encouraged. But the preachers also get discouraged. And I was listening to one of the guys that I listened to this week, and he said, I, I fire myself every Sunday, and I rehire myself every Monday or Tuesday because they're standing alone. And it's getting harder and harder to find people that will tell the truth, that don't have some kind of a hidden plan behind them or they're being paid off by someone. So we, we have to be thankful for those that do speak truth and don't take them for granted because there is a famine in the land of hearing the word of the Lord. So let's, let's share a couple of things. I just want to give you a quick update on something I shared a long time ago. Uh, but while I'm doing that, open your Bibles to Luke 18. And this is a time that we need our Bibles more than ever. And half of the last burden that I've had the last, what, 10 years or whatever, being in the false church, now I see it was a false church, is exposing the false church. And we're going to get into just a, a touch of this. But the main thing, what I want to share today, is to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and beware of the leaven of the, of the uh, Sadducees, but also of Herod, because this was the battle that Jesus had. And this is what he basically exposed to us and the money changers. And this battle still goes on today. So you have to know who you cannot criticize. There's new laws coming in. Know who you cannot criticize because they're the ones that are controlling everything. And more Christians are deceived by this. 
but you have to know who you cannot criticize are the ones that are controlling everything. So in, just, like they, just like the battle continues that Jesus had. Now an update of what I wanted to share with you. Um, the new report, the World Economic Forum, says 98% of central banks have agreed to replace paper money with trackable digital cash. This is their long-awaited dream that they've been working on for a long time. And it's, it says mostly the central banks that are owned privately by the bankers. Um, and something I shared with you a couple of years ago, and I'm going to quote this again. This is by an economist, Dr. Pippa Melgren, in March 2022. She addressed the World Government Summit and said, and I quote, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money in accounting and introduce a new one. And the new, the new accounting is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having an almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. So what does that mean for us? Greater control. Whenever anything says smart, just put surveillance. S anything that's a smart, smart meter, smart, whatever it is, it's all about surveillance. Uh, and what is this? It programs the pro programmable money in such a way that makes it applicable only at certain stores or for certain goods and services and not others. So we're going to watch this develop. And it's just a heads up because this is already happening. I think it's in Australia. And I'd love to hear from you, Australia. Let us know what's going on over there, if this is true, if they really implemented. I'd like to hear right from the grounds, boots on the ground. Otherwise, I've just learned I, there's a lot of news we can't even trust anymore, right? So here's the thing we have to watch. There's some things that, what can we do? Because there's so many things that are out of our control. What can we do? Well, we have to walk, number one, in the fear of the Lord. This is something we can do. First Peter 5 says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And I did a whole study on pride. And the people that are not serving the Lord, that are against Christ, are full of pride because they do not think they need God. Right. And so they have rejected him and they reject his followers, the kings of the earth. They have counseled together against the Lord and against his anointed. So this is not new, but there's things that are coming to a head, especially in the West, especially in America. Things are happening that we've never seen happen before. And like we've shared before, they, they are trying to melt the middle class. People are struggling like they've never struggled financially. Insurances now, I heard in Michigan, if you have a wood stove, they will cancel your insurance. I read about this years ago, yeah. all this stuff that little by little, and usually if it happens in one state, watch because it will. Now this is a new order. So it's, it's what happens in one country, it might take a while, things will happen, but this is a new system that they want to put into place. So we have to be humble and walk with the Lord and humility is not pretending that you don't have gifts and talents. It's not pretending that you can't do anything. And oh, it's not, it's not that. Humility is dependence on the Lord. And this is how we have to live in these end times. Dependence, just like a, a branch is dependent on the vine. If you separate that branch from the vine, the branch dies. We can't separate ourselves from the Lord. And this is what the enemy wants with the false church, with the false teachings. All this is to get us to be an individual branch so that we don't draw from the Lord, that we listen to false teachers and we, we think we don't need him. We have formulas instead of a, of a relationship. So we have to go back to dependence on him. And the Pharisees and the Herodians are still here today. Jesus dealt with them and he, he warned us, beware Beware, and that word beware there means to avoid, be on guard, be cautious, be alert. Why? There's danger. And why are, not, why are we not 
aware that we need to watch out for the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians. So we're going to talk just a little bit about it, but there's some things that you can do and some things you cannot do. But the first thing is to be aware. Because it says a little leaven, and it's a leaven. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. What is that? It's the false. It's the lies. And it increases and it spreads like yeast. And this is what's happened to many of our churches. They've been infiltrated by Pharisees. And the Pharisees, I can't even tell you their names, but if you look over here in your own Bible, you'll have to read it now yourself. Revelations 2.9 and Revelations 3.9. Beware. They say they are the people of God, but they are not. By their fruits, you shall know them. And the number one hindrance that all of us have to be aware of is pride. That's the number one hindrance to knowing God, fellowshipping with God, keeping our relationship pure with God. It's that spirit of pride. And that spirit of pride is what Lucifer has, and all of his ministers have it. Bragging, boasting, they, they put themselves on pedestals, and then they despise others. Jesus' whole ministry was in conflict with their teachings. What do they use? Fear, guilt, and manipulation. And it's really bad when the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod join. And this is what we're seeing in our hour. We're seeing these things join together. They're puffed up boasters. Their goal is to acquire things. So if you're going to a church and all they talk about is stuff and things and the minister brags of all the things he has, that's not one you want to follow or be a part of or give or serve at all because they're lovers of mammon, Luke 16, 14. The Pharisee disguises worldliness under spiritual language. You can make anything sound spiritual. The Pharisees get rich off the people and make merchandise of the people. Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple, but today we invite them in and we support them. We are not. We are to come out from amongst them and be separate. So what can we do? Proverbs 8.13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. We have to hate evil. God hates evil. We have to hate evil. The Pharisees and the Herodians are passing laws. They're doing things to try to make evil look good. What do we do? We stay with the Lord. We have to hate evil. If we fear the Lord, we will hate what he hates, and we will love what he loves. He hates Evil, he hates pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. What is the forward mouth? It's not easily managed. People that just let their mouth go off, whatever comes into their head and they don't have any control, God hates that. Because we have to learn to control our thoughts and control our speech so that our heart can be right. If, if our mouth goes off, that means also we're not really letting God control our heart, having a good heart, because our mouth reveals the fruit of our thoughts. So God hates it. It's not easily managed, it's perverse, it's <coughs> twisted, and it's crooked. So God hates those things, and he also hates pride. So we should too. Luke in chapter 18 is a good example of the fruits of a Pharisee in Luke 18 and verse 9, and he spoke that parable unto certain, and he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. This is the first thing. Pharisees trust in themselves. They're not trusting in the Lord. And when we get religious and we start thinking that we can boss God around, decree and declare, boss him around, whatever is going on in all these crazy churches, we're trusting in ourselves. And we're not walking in humility, we're walking in pride. They trusted in themselves 
What are they trusting in? That they're righteous. And one thing that they always do is they despise others. They lift themselves up. Sometimes I listen to some preachers and all they're doing is lifting themselves up. They're mocking the poor. Mm -hmm. They're doing different things. It's just like that is not a good spirit. But they despise others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood, and the first thing he does is he prays with himself. <laughs> God's not listening. Because why? He said he resists them. He resists the proud. I don't care what they look like, what kind of garb they have on, what kind of crown and hula, hula, what they're wearing. He's praying with himself. And he says what? God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Now he goes into the list all the good works that he does. We don't get to heaven by our good works. He said, I fast twice in a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but he smote upon his breast saying, God be merciful unto me a sinner. I tell you that this man went down into the house justified rather than the other. For one, for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exhaust, exalted. So we have to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of Herod, the spirit of mammon, the leaven of the Pharisees is man-made teachings that corrupt and spread. Now, if you don't do certain things in churches, you can get your exempt status taken away. They're trying to do that right now. And you know, at some point we have to say is let them take it away. Yep. They corrupt and they spread. And what the, what the leaven of the Pharisees do, they cause attitudes of pride and sin. They add to scriptures. And the leaven of Herod, which we are seeing, and we're going to see the Hoya of the leaven of Herod, like we've never seen. The leaven of Herod is the politics. And if you don't understand how politics are, you're going to be totally deceived. Because they want you to go into one group or the other group and one group's controlled opposition says everything you want to hear. But guess what? Nothing changes. Nothing changes. No. This might change for a little bit, and then that might change for a little bit, but it's all a bunch of Hoya. Why? Because his kingdom's not of this world. No. A political man is not going to solve our problems. They're too deep. And they always come in the name of the Lord. They always come saying, I'm a Christian. They always come saying this and that and this and that. And then what happens, like what's happening now, we're seeing the colleges being invaded. And this is another repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. We've already seen this before. If they want to change a law, they add violence to it. Remember I, I did that whole thing on Dr. Richard Day and he said if things don't go along fast enough for the plans they want, they will add violence. They will do this, that, and the other. Why? Because then they can take away free speech. And they're really working on the first and the second amendments right now. And they have been for a long time, but we're going to start seeing more and more flags that are not true. I can't even say that word now. So if it's not true, it's, so it's, okay, figure it out. <laughs> the leaven of Herod is the puppet king. Listen to this carefully. Herod, who was Herod? Why is it the leaven of Herod? Because he was the puppet king backed by Rome. Some things don't change. Mm -hmm. If you really know what's going on, you'll see the same things happening to us today. So watch out for these groups. Why? Because they're enemies of the truth. The leaven of the religious and the leaven of the political. The leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Let me give you just an example. Example of leaven. 
things that have happened in our churches and happened in so many things that I know of, preachers that I used to hang around, they'd always quote this verse, 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God wants us all rich. God wants us all to prosper. That word prosper in the Greek means to go well with. That you might as have a good journey. Things might go well. This has nothing to do with a financial doctrine that has been pushed through all these churches. This is the leaven of the Pharisees. And it spread. And it spread into the rich are blessed and the poor are cursed. If you don't have money, there's something wrong with you. If you're not totally healed, there's something wrong with you. And guess what? They're all hypocrites. Because uh, there's an article, Death by Faith, Let Us Reason has that in there if you want to look it up. It doesn't work for them either. They have an outward man that's perishing as well. And they've had to fight this one guy that was preaching, I've never had a headache for 50 years. Yeah, but he had four heart attacks. Doesn't talk about that. Doesn't talk about the situations he's really dealing with. What is that? That is a lie. That is trying to put um, everybody else like, oh, wow, I want to be like this guy. I, I want to not have a headache either for 50 years. We live in a world <coughs> that's fallen. And things happen. And things are happening to us. Things are going on in Today I heard what, how many tons of hamburger got recalled. Uh, don't think these things are just happening. These things are planned occurrences. So beware of the false Pharisees' church. What are the fruits? Pride. Hindrances to knowing God. They shut the door to know God. They tell you have to do all these things. You have to, you know, carry around this necklace and rub it. What? What? I'm sorry, but yeah, all these different things that you have to do, really? Uh, hmm. Obadiah 3 says, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. When we get into pride, we get blinded. And we think we're all that. And we're not. So we have to stay humble, because as we stay humble... We're quick to fall to our knees and repent. We're quick to say, Lord, you know, and we all can look back and see the mistakes we've made, and we can all look back and just, you know, say, Lord, if it weren't for the grace of God, so would I be, right? But then we can get on these religious horses and judge everybody and pretend that we are so righteous, but if it weren't for the blood of Jesus and the grace of God and the Holy Spirit, we have nothing to brag about. So that's why we have to stay humble before him because without him, we are nothing. But with him, we can do things through him, but not through ourselves. We've been taught, you can do it. You don't need God. You just really become a God. By your words, you become God. And this is the whole mystic, Gnostic teaching, the visitations that they're having, all this stuff. It's hypocrisy and a lot of lying, and demonic spirits. Well, that was a real experience. Yeah, you had a real experience. So did I. I had a lot of real experiences. Now I look back and go, that was not the Lord. That was a kundalini spirit that came in through a man now that I know was not a true man of God, but was popular, was famous, was on TV, and a lot of pride's on him. And a lot of pride gets on us when we walk that way. Pride must be served. These people like to be served. They like to have people carrying their Bibles. They like, they like to have all their secret people around them. I used to hate that. I just, I would, I would run to the bathroom and, and ditch them all. I just couldn't stand having all these security people around me back in the day. It just felt wrong. It just, they're putting you up, up on a pedestal to be, it's just, it's just all wrong. All these things are so wrong. Pride must be served and show off. Humility can serve. You get your joy out of serving others. You get your joy out of being part of helping other people instead of judging people. Why aren't you healed? What's wrong with you? Why don't you? And a lot of these people have left the church now because they were taught something that didn't work for them. 
and they trashed the whole thing. More people now that say they were in these movements, a word of faith, NAR, whatever you want to call it, their kids won't follow you because they trashed it. They're like, it didn't work for mom and dad. It's not, I don't want anything to do with it. And we have to live with that. But there again, we were all deceived, thinking we were doing the right thing. So what do you do? You got to pick yourself back up. Sometimes we just, it's, you just got to pick yourself back up and start over. Yep. So humility can serve and it can be submissive. Proud people will not submit. They always have to be right. They always have to be the boss. They always have to force people. I just, the older I get, I'm just like, I don't have time for you people. Do you know? You always have to have it your way. But humble people, they can be submissive. Okay, you want to do it that way. I can, they can admit they're wrong. Proud people won't even say they're sorry. They're always angry. They're always mad. They always have to be in control. But when you walk with the Lord and you keep your mind on Him, there's just a peace that comes about you. You don't have to be in control. You don't have to be right. So what if you're wrong? You're, it's okay. There's just a freedom when we walk in humility versus pride, hard, arrogant. We have to be right. We have to put on a good show. And that's why the Pharisees were hypocrites. They put on a mask, but that's not who they were. God sees through all that. Psalms 10.4, the proud will not seek after God. Why? They don't think they need him. This one here, the Pharisee here, he didn't need God. He had his formulas. He had all the things that he was doing. And this is the part with the Pharisees. They really rejected Christ and still do. And this is what the whole Antichrist system is coming in, right under the nose of, oh, it's Christians. No. No. The proud will not seek after God. They want to dethrone him. Pride thinks it no longer needs advice. Whenever you get to the point where you think you know it all, you're in trouble. God can use a little kid to straighten you out. God can use whoever he wants to. But if you're proud and arrogant, you won't listen because you know it all. Do you know any know-it-alls in your life? That whenever you try to tell them what's going on in the world, they think you're a nut? Yeah. They haven't taken the time to study because it takes time and it's wearing yeah. to go through articles and to go through what's going on in the world. The frustrating part for me is there's a whole lot I want to say, but I can't say it because now it's, it's, we're into another realm of purging. So I want to say go back and listen to some of my old videos. Go back some of those and where I could really talk freely and as long as they're still up because we have to know what's coming. God wants his people to know what's coming. The power is leaving the West and it's going over to the East. That's what's happening. So pride thinks it no longer needs advice. Pride says, I'll do things my way. I hate that song, I did it my way. That is so much like a Pharisee. We were uh, on the boat with this guy and they played this song for him at the end of this w ride we were on. I won't go into who he was and how famous he is and all that. But they played this song, I did it my way. And... His nurse was there and we were trying to preach to him to not do it his way because he's 90 something and he better get doing it God's way because he doesn't have much time left. But when they get to the point where they have so many things that they've been successful on, they don't think they need God and they don't give God the credit for their gifts and talents. And some of them didn't get it right anyway. They did it underhandedly, they did deals, they bought, got bought out, who knows all the things, why they really got the success that they did but they do it their way, and they can't be corrected. Pride is deceptive. The Pharisee thought he was closer to God than all the others, but guess what? He was deceived. He was deceived. He wasn't close to God at all. All he did was talk about himself, pray with himself. God resist him. He was self-centered. In closing, we have to Walk in the fear of the Lord in these times. These are wearing out the saints' days. Like the Bible talks about, the enemy wants to wear you down. Have you ever been around somebody that just nags, nags, <coughs> nags? They want their way. If I just nag them enough, then I'll get my way. You've got to say, no, you can nag all you want. I'm not being moved until I do what, what God tells me to do. That's how the enemy is. 
put fear, put fear. And the Bible says many are going to fear and they're going to have they're going to die from fear of the things that are coming on the earth. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. We're not to fear the things that the enemy wants us to fear because our life is in God's hands. Our days are numbered, right? He can't take us out until God says our race is finished. So Father, we pray that we'd all walk in the fear of the Lord in these days that there's so much Hoya going on. There's so many lies. There's so much deception. There's new uh, attacks on the college campuses. We see exactly through it. We've been through this before. Other countries have been through this. Thank you for showing us what's really going on and what they're really trying to accomplish. And Father, we thank you. We know that the enemy tried to, you know, killed you and wants to get rid of all of us. But we thank you, Father, for though we're persecuted, you said count it all joy. You said they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So what do we do? We live every day to the fullest. We take no thought of our lives because, Father, you gave us life and we walk in it and we walk in the fear of the Lord that you give us a love for the things you love, which is your people, and we hate the things you hate, which is evil, the evil way, and give us a hate for pride, that when we see it in ourselves, we'll judge ourselves and say, that was arrogant, that was boastful, I'm bragging, and we put it away from us. We deny our flesh from wanting to show off, be king, be superior, all these things. We say no to our flesh. We want to walk in the Spirit. We want to walk in the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for giving us protection in these last days. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? To watch Roberta's messages, you can see her on YouTube at Roberta Morrison. Roberta Morrison 2, the backup channel. Living in His Presence Church on Rumble. Living in His Presence Church on BitChute. And at the livinginhispresence.org website where you can see all the messages and download them as free audio MP3s. If you would like to contribute to this ministry, go to the main webpage and on the top right is a Give button. Thank you and see you next time.